What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to continue learning about code magic, CICD, and specifically be focusing on the command line tools where you can build and test things locally before you push your code to your remote repository. So here's the code magic uh, main website. I'm going to link the playlist down below. We're going to be actually focusing on their CLI tools that they published here on GitHub, CLI for command line interface, basically a bunch of really useful packages that you can run locally to test everything out on your development machine so you don't have any unexpected behavior or errors when you push to CI CD. So before we get into the weeds of things, drop a like down below, hit subscribe, you guys know the spiel, and let's get into it. So first and foremost, we need a project to actually run these commands on and test with. So I have a project that I've created here. It is the one that we've been using continuously throughout the various uh, CICD videos. We're gonna go ahead and hit trust and open. And just so everyone can get a glimpse in terms of what is going on inside this project, let me go ahead and uh, wait for this guy to load. And as soon as Xcode decides to stop being slow, we're gonna take a peek as to what's in here. There is not too much, in fact, so a couple of things to take note of. Uh, this is a workspace, IA.workspace, capital I, capital A. The only actual code in here is a background color being set here to system pink and everything else other than that has been unchanged. In addition to noting that, you should also note that the scheme for our project here is also IA, which matches our actual target name here as well, which is IA. You can notice our bundle ID, our build number, our version, et cetera, et cetera. None of this really uh, pertains to you know our actual CLI tools, but just to call it out before we get into things. Now for the remainder of the video, we can actually do is close Xcode. Never thought I'd say that, but we're gonna close Xcode and we're gonna jump into Terminal. Now, if you're not familiar with Terminal or comfortable with it, by the end of this video, hopefully you will be more so than you are now. Now, if we come on over to the GitHub page for the CLI tools that I've got linked down below, we'll see some basic descriptions in terms of what we actually have offered. And we're going to head back to the main page here since we were on a secondary page. At the very top here, the first thing you're going to see is we need to actually install the CodeMagic CLI tools. And we're going to use a Python dependency manager known as pip, Python package manager. We're going to copy and paste this command into terminal. Now pip and Python, you should have installed on your computer already since it's bundled in Mac OS. If you don't, you're gonna see some errors here and feel free to comment them, comment them down below. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in and just hit enter. You're gonna see a bunch of output. It should succeed. I have it installed already. You'll see some deprecation warnings that you can ignore, but once you have it installed, you can hit command K and just clear it out and you are ready to go. Now, before we do some examples, let's talk about what this actually offers, because right now it just looks like a whole lot of text. So oftentimes there's really common tasks that you want to double check and you want to double check those things uh, run and pass successfully in a similar environment to your CI CD when you push your code. So that can be things along the lines of making sure your uh, keychain is configured properly with your certificates. Keychain is the Apple mechanism, for those of you who don't know, that stores your private keys and certificates that are used to code sign your application or otherwise authenticate your developer identity. Now, other than Keychain, you perhaps also want to go ahead and build your project. So let's say you want to build your project or you maybe want to clean your project or you want to double check that your bundle ID is correct, etc., etc. Get your IPA info. All of these commands locally are offered through the CLI tool so you can do all of that in case something is going wrong in CICD so you can validate. Now in addition to that, the other one that I think is particularly helpful and really interesting is App Store Connect. So locally, you can upload your app to App Store Connect through Xcode's own UI, or let's say you wanted to do a specific action with Apple's App Store Connect, like creating a bundle ID or certificates, or maybe deleting a bundle ID or certificates, you can use this App Store Connect command with all of these actions to actually go and do these actions with your developer identity. Now, if you've been following along with the videos, we've got a previous video using things like your private key issuer ID that I'm gonna have a card for either up above on this video or down below in the description. 
I encourage you to take a look at that to understand those concepts, but this is basically the command line interface for that offering that CodeMagic provides in their dashboard. Now, enough of talking, let's go ahead and actually use some of these and see them in action. So the first thing we want to do is actually CD into our project. We can see that I'm in the proper directory here in my terminal window. It actually shows us we're inside this project folder. And let's go ahead and just run one of these. So maybe we'll go ahead and start with something that's easily easy and interesting. We'll go with Xcode project. Now, if I just type in Xcode project and hit enter, you're going to see that we don't get anything. And the reason is because I spelled Xcode wrong. But if you spell it correctly and then hit enter, third time's a charm. Let's get rid of that double D. We'll go ahead and see we get a list of all the commands that are offered. So there are things like detect the bundle ID, get IPA info, et cetera, et cetera. Let's tell this command, go ahead and detect the bundle ID from this project. So if we go ahead and run it, the next thing you're going to notice that it's complaining about is it doesn't actually know. Uh, so we'll, well, the first thing we need to do is say detect bundle ID. And here, actually, it'll pass. But if we run another command, you'll see in a moment, we also need to specify the Xcode project. In this case, it was smart enough to pick it up itself. And here it has spit out the bundle ID. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. So let's say we say Xcode project. And we go ahead and say, go ahead and clean the project. If we go ahead and do that, it's going to say we don't actually know what XC workspace or project you're trying to clean. Cleaning is a command that actually cleans the build folder for a fresh build. So what we need to actually do is tell the CLI tools what workspace we have to work with. And it is called IA.XC workspace. And if I open up a new window and print out all the files in here, you'll notice that inside this printed out, we already have the IA.XC workspace. So in case you're wondering where that's coming from, that is where it is. So now that we've done that, one would think it's sufficient. We can go ahead and hit enter. And now you're going to notice there's one more error. Now the other error, and this is why I called out the scheme when we opened up the project, is we need to also specify which scheme should be cleaned in this project. An XC workspace or a project can have one to as many as hundreds of thousands of schemes. So you can specify which one needs to actually be cleaned. So we're going to specify that and then the IA scheme. It's going to say that it has started to clean and it has successfully cleaned. Now, admittedly, this is a fairly small project, which is why the clean is very quick. In larger projects, it is definitely longer. And it's a cool thing that you can run through terminal and you can just go away from your computer and come back and it'll be done. No need to fuss with the Xcode UI. Now, other than actually cleaning and detecting bundle IDs and whatnot, there are a bunch of really interesting, interesting things you can do, like building the actual uh, IPA, which is the iPhone application file formats. We're not going to go through that one since it's a little lengthier. You can do things like get the default test destination. You can also go ahead and get the IPA info. You can actually run your tests. Now, if we go ahead and actually click into one of these, you'll see that there are a plethora of options you can pass to the actual command. Things like what project to run tests for, what workspace, any configuration we want, a scheme, if we want to do it cleanly, if we want to disable code coverage, etc, etc. Now that's, that's one of the commands. That's Xcode project. Now you'll notice, and I purposely didn't mention it, the CLI tools, even though we're having a discussion today about iOS, are not only for iOS projects. They're available for Android as well. So if you're building an application that is for both platforms, cross platforms, the CLI tools have you covered. Now, other than that, we also have things like Keychain. So if we come down to the Keychain commands, you'll notice there's things in here like adding certificates, creating them, deleting them, and also getting defaults. So let's actually go ahead and run one of these commands and see what we actually end up getting. So if I just run Keychain, it's going to show me all the things that are available. So we're going to say Keychain, go ahead and get the default one. So get default just like that. And it's going to spit out my default system Keychain path, which is this here. It is your Keychain path where all of your credentials, certificates, and keys are stored. Now, other than Keychain, the other one that I think is really interesting and that I want to touch on before we wrap up today's video 
is the app store connect command. Now the reason this is really interesting is because you can do things like upload your app and actually do a bunch of other things as well, like creating bundle IDs, et cetera, et cetera, with this command locally. So let's go ahead and say we want to, let's see, we can fetch signing files. Let's pick one to actually experiment with. We're gonna say list builds. Now you're gonna notice this is gonna fail when we run it and we're gonna talk through why. So we're gonna say app store connect and we're gonna say list builds. I believe it was plural. Go ahead and hit enter. And the first thing it's gonna yell at me about is the fact uh, that we need to specify an issuer ID. Now you might be wondering what the heck is an issuer ID? The first place you should go to actually look for it is within the options here. So let's see, let's go find that list builds. We're gonna click into this. And inside here, we're gonna look at the options. You'll see an issuer ID is your issuer ID key. We're gonna also need to specify the key ID, private key, and I believe those are the three that are required. Now, we're not gonna be doing this today since this is pretty redundant in terms of what we have covered already in prior videos. You can generate all these issuer IDs and keys through App Store Connect, and you can provide the path to those issuer IDs or the actual strings directly here in Terminal. Now, this is the exact same process as it is in the Code Magic dashboard on their website. So nothing different other than the fact that you can do it locally and you can provide them through Terminal. Now, one other thing that's really important that I would like to call out here is it would be a little silly if you'd have to type in things like your issuer ID and key ID and all of those IDs over and over again, presumably for running a variety of commands. So of course, CodeMagic offers the ability to specify an environment variable for App Store Connect issuer ID. And for those of you who've seen the previous video, this might look very familiar for environment variables that we use in the CodeMagic dashboard. And you can specify these and CodeMagic will read this, the CLI tools will read this from the environment variables. That way you don't have to redundantly specify this over and over. And that is basically how you would get these App Store Connect commands up and running. Now, the documentation is pretty exhaustive. You can go through this and you can see there's also action groups. So not only can you go and run individual actions, let's see if we have this apps action group, we can come into here and you can notice we can run things through this too. We can say apps, we can log API calls, we can pass in these options here as well. Once again, you'll need things like the issuer ID. Each of these are explained more thoroughly down below. So for example, this issuer ID, it is your app store connect. Uh, key issuer ID and they actually go as far as to give you links to Apple's documentation where you can jump here and read more about it in case you don't understand or want to understand more. And that's basically what is offered by the CodeMagic CLI tools. It's something that I found myself using quite a bit when I was running into issues, mainly because of my own errors in the CodeMagic YAML files. It's really nice to be able to run these commands locally. And if something goes wrong, you can actually find the log files locally. And that brings me to the actual last thing that I would like to do. And if we run code project or Xcode project and we say build IPA, we're gonna notice it's gonna complain about two things. One, we don't have a workspace and we also need to specify a scheme. So we're gonna say our workspace is ia.xc workspace. Let's make sure we spell that correctly. And the scheme is going to be IA. Now, for any reason, if this fails, which I'm aware is going to fail here, what we'll get is this output. Now it's failing for a known reason. Locally, you need to set up a info plist file for export. But the thing that I wanna draw your attention to is you actually get a path to where the output logs are in terms of what went wrong. Now you can access this when you run a CICD job on the remote side as well, but it's a lot easier to validate these things locally before you actually go and waste you know, your time and your developer's time. So we can go ahead and say open we can paste in that path and here you'll get the entire verbose output in terms of what actually happened and more importantly what has gone wrong so it's a lot of reading so i'm going to highlight what actually went wrong it's at this line right here if we just go up and actually line break this perhaps starting here looks like i can't actually edit it we'll see that an exception occurred and it gives you the entire stack trace in terms of what went wrong 
Specifically, it could not find a specific file that it was looking for, and it has basically given you the entire call stack in terms of what has gone wrong. So being able to debug is the main point that I'd like to call out here. It's incredibly, incredibly important, especially as you start dealing with large scale projects and you wanna automate more of it and you don't wanna deal with nebulous headaches that randomly happen when you push your code. So that is Code CLI Tools for Code Magic in a nutshell. If you have any questions, drop them down below. A lot of reading on the README here, great documentation on Code Magic's part. I'm going to be linking the previous video down below, if not in the video cards already. Let me know if you have any questions, follow-ups, feedback. Love to hear from you guys. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below. Subscribe for more content, and definitely check out Code Magic if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.